today to talk about Grad Rush. This is a first time game from a, a un, well, unknown publisher or designer. Us, yeah. Unknown designer joined a publisher. So, uh, we'll give us stats. Well, before that, yeah. hit that subscribe button. So you can see interesting games like this that you don't see anywhere else. And the only way you know that is by also hitting the notification bell. Yeah. So I'll and let you know when you Yeah, that. and yeah. comment. You know, give Even this guy some feedback on his first time at this this game. So Brad Rush uh, was made in 2019, uh, designed by uh, Tushar Kumar. Uh, I apologize if I mispronounce any of these names. Uh, so the art, we have several artists here. We got Alex Smerniotis or Neotis. Uh, Charmaine Lai, Alex Wallman, Sarah Ford, and Luis Gonzalez. It is a one versus one, uh, so a two-player game, and the MSRP is available on Amazon for thirty bucks. Yeah, I, I don't think anybody else is carrying it. I, I, didn't, see, I didn't see, I didn't see anything anywhere else on it. So uh, just Amazon. So uh, we spoke with uh, Tashir, <laughs> yeah, and you know got got some information on it, and it's you know this was his first attempt, and it's. Uh, it's definitely it's hard to compare this to right. other games that are more established because it's not going to have quality of components that are up to standard. And it standard. wouldn't be fair anyway. Yeah, so, it's, so we're going to give assessments, but it's not necessarily going to be, the scale may not be the same if you compared it to, right. as, you know, we're taking into consideration this is a first time publisher, you know, have at what you will. You know, we're going to still talk about yeah. some of the pros and cons and things that with, associated with all of that. So let's talk about quality of components. So first of all, I, I got to say, for a first time publishing, I was actually impressed with some of the pieces. I, I was. Uh, as the well. dice are really nice. They're all custom dice, mm -hmm. and they have t two sets. There's three of that have uh, your your graduation cap on them, which are represent in essence victory points in the right. game. They're your GPA, they call it. Yeah, and then um, you got speed. Speed, yeah, it's a little speedometer. Yeah, uh, and that's how much you move in this. Uh, so. I like the dice. the The punch out pieces are kind of mad. These yeah. are what you typically see. I think in it's a, standard cardboard. Yeah, it's very, nothing special. But well, it's, it's not even standard. This is the kind of what you see in a standard like Kickstarter, maybe first yeah. time Kickstarter. But it's not all right. It's functional. The markers that you use for your credits. It mentioned in the rule book that these were clear, but they're not clear. Yeah. Uh, and I think they would have been more functional as like a like a see through of some I kind. Agree. Probably not like totally clear, but maybe like a yellow see through or a right. red see through, because uh, you're going to use them on the credits to identify how many basically spend points you have on cards. Uh, so it'd be nice to be able to see the number you're on when you're marking it, but it's not essential. Um, then you got card quality itself. Yeah, the cards so. they're not horrible. They're no, not they're great. Not. They're no, there's no texture to them. But you know. It re Again, coming from the perspective as this being a first-time published game, yeah, they're not bad. No, I've seen a lot worse. Uh, in, so like, in professionally, and, yeah, games, yeah, and, I would and, say and these are big-dollar Kickstarter games, like so. Dune Imperium. I, it's yeah, a, to put a point. I mean, it's a huge game. The cards; these are car better quality cards yeah. than Dune Imperium, which and is sad. It, it is, but not sad for Dune. It's yeah. sad for Dune. Yeah, yeah, not for this. Not for this. Um, you know, I, I think you know the. Board is actually a nice touch because I wasn't expecting a board in, in a first time release. Yeah. It's actually a decent board. It's not bad at all. It's, it looks nice. It looks nice. Now, there are some typos. <laughs> uh, one of the blatantly obvious ones is there's a, a it's, in essence, when you're playing the game, it's a rock, paper, scissors approach to when your cards conflict. Yes. And in, in one of the words is supposed to be intimidate, and it's actually spelled correctly in the smaller print, but in the large, bold print you see first thing, it's spelled intimidate. So yeah. it's a pretty blatant, obvious miss. Uh, um, and then there were some issues in the rule book, but uh, I didn't see anything on the cards that we ran into. Yeah, I, I didn't see any problems with the card text. Yeah. And, and we'll talk about card text. That's one of the highlights of the game. Yeah. So as far as quality, given that this is a first timer uh, doing a first time approach to this game and it's not like published by a major company right. it's published basically self published or it is yeah i don't know if they they got to design it but it's definitely self published i would say i'm going to give this a 6 i i think it's a better than what you would typically get as far as that i agree i i think 6 maybe even a 6 and a half because just because even though the uh misspelling of the one word is really the 
And I, I don't like the credit token. Yeah. I have to admit that, that that's kind of a bummer. The credit token and these, I don't like the cardboard. But the dice right. aren't, maybe, yeah. I, I think I might be with you in the six but, and a half. But, but I, I don't think the cardboard's that big of a deal. So I, I'm thinking I'm going to go six and a half. I think that, uh, again, take into effect that this is a self published game, uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm impressed with yeah. the fact that you know somebody could release. It makes me excited if I had ever tried to release right. one. Um, as far as theme goes, it's a fun theme. I mean, it is. It, um, it, it kind of you know maybe bring back some bad memories of being bullied in high school. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, it's got some neat art on the cards. The, uh, the art is really neat. Yeah, and there's a lot of humor in some of the cards. A lot of tongue in cheek. Yeah, uh, you mentioned something about even on the, the so, box. Yeah, yeah, even on the box cover itself. You're probably not going to be able to see this, but I'm sure Randy will put a picture of it on uh, mm -hmm. uh, during the video. But uh, it's underneath the um, the the crest, uh, the crest of the uh, the Jen Eric High School crest. It says Omnia Dicta Fortiera, I guess, C si Dicta Latina. So, assuming it's Latin, I went in uh, to Google Translate and had to translate it because I don't know Latin. And it says everything said is stronger is said in Latin. So <laughs> that's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, just little touches uh, yeah, like little that, stuff that like that. There. Just really, you know, it, it just it, it's the nice touches yeah. that. My I favorite really was the card, the water boy card. Yeah, water boy was because he affects like all the athletes in the game and gives them more speed. But the card has him dressed up in a superhero costume with water written that on says him. water in big letters on the on his outfit. And you almost don't even notice their letters unless yeah. you look really careful that it spells water because it looks just like this giant shape. And, and, then, and there's a little character in the back either is having a good time with his towel or it looks like he's licking on it or something. I don't know, <laughs> yeah. but it's hilarious. But yeah, I mean, there's some real funny cards in this game. It really, really yeah, is. I appreciated that. Uh, as far as the art in general, I mean, the board just looks like a plain, like it looks like a white sheet of paper that got right. crinkled. Right, that lined piece of paper yeah. that, that, that you would Which write your notes on. It's very basic, but it gets the, it jo gets the job it done. It works perfectly I mean, well. it does. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I thematically really love this game. I do too. I, I'm, I think, I mean, given that this it's it, it's so basic, but yet it gets the point across, and the art is so really pretty. I think I'm gonna give it a nine. I agree. I, I think I was gonna give it a nine as well, just because it, it's not just pretty, but it's effective, and it does even give you those those feels a little bit of. Man, I remember when someone shoved me into a locker, and you got a card called Shoulder Shovel mm -hmm. Shover, and so it. It may remind you of that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, moving on to the rules. Now, this is where it suffers a bit. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, first of all, as you all know, I hate centerfolds. And this one is a big centerfold. It's like a double. This is like right. a special edition centerfold. Um, but... Not to mention, the worst part of it is it's a centerfold that when you're reading it, when you flip it over, they, the reverse side is right to left, which is counterintuitive to how you read. Which threw us for a minute because I was yeah. reading and then I wrapped to the next page and it started exactly. in the middle of a paragraph. In the future. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, I don't like the way it's laid out. But then getting past that, there's some holes in the rules we yeah. ran into. There was, you know, some, some on move, as far as the movement goes and how when you, when you actually get to graduate, uh, there's some typos in here. It, it, um, there were some definite rule misses on it, and, and there's no card explanations whatsoever. And I think that's where the biggest gap is. I think so play. too. Yeah, because I, we can get past the, the things in here because I think you know we made the correct assumptions when we were playing, but uh, we were able to get in contact this year and get mm -hmm. correct, you know, correct. Which we appreciate that yeah. we were able to contact him, and he was gracious enough to kind of fill in those gaps. For yeah, us. that was really nice. So we were able to get a clean playthrough of it and get, yeah. you know make sure we were playing it correctly. And that was really helpful. Uh, but the, the biggest miss, I think, is just in the cards themselves. There's no cheat sheet at all in this. It's in the in the book. There's not even one for the actions, really. I mean, right. it would be nice to have the actions in front of you, but it would be good to have something that explains the cards, especially if there's a, a limited, finite set of them. Right. I, I, when we talked to Tashir, his original de design intent was this was going to be a living card. Well, a card game that is like, like a living card game. You want, that's a, a, a right. uh, quoted term, so uh, we would not use that term as far as going forward with this game. But uh, it is a card game that would be adaptable, and additional right. cards could be added to it. So it would be you. You would and I could see where that you could do that with this game. Yes, you I, could. I could totally see how you could expand upon that. And, and in the in the rules, they actually spent a good time in it. Uh, going through variants where you can yeah. play it that way with the cards you have. And a drafting mechanism. Yeah. 
So I, I think it is adaptable to that. Um, but as far as, you know, I think it needed something to explain the cards and right. say, you know, especially some of the ones that were less clear. I mean, I don't really like when they give you part of them, but this one is one that I might suggest that at minimum they have the ones that are confusing. Yeah. Uh, I, I would ideally have a card explanation for every card, but that could get bulky. Because uh, there are quite a few cards. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, if nothing else, maybe kind of highlight some examples or mm -hmm. more examples so that if, if you don't see the exact card, you can infer it by looking yeah. at some of these examples. So uh, as far as the rules, I'm going to have to, I think I'm going to have to give these probably, a, I don't know, maybe a three and a half, I think. Yeah. Uh, and I hate to say that, but at least uh, when we did talk to um, Tushar, he did admit that this is kind of a work in progress. And, yeah. You know, it was his first time. And, and, you know, and he's and, updated some yeah, of it, updated on, it on, on Board Game Geek and stuff. So it, that was kind of, it's good to know that he's aware of it too and yeah. that, that he's trying to fix that. Yeah. So moving on to gameplay. So this is a very simplistic game. You get a hand of cards starting at, as well, it's always five. You draw up to five every turn. Um, but we both have the exact same deck. And you have the same deck. It's just a matter of the shuffle that's right. going to differentiate. There's basically suits of cards. You have the, uh, I forget what he calls them, and the jocks or athletes. You, you have got the preps. The preps. The, the, the and, athletes. And, and the, 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 um, the misfits. Yes. There are the three main ones. There's also basically the, what is it, the, the common ones, the, the generic uh, yeah. students. And those are those get beat by any of the other suits. So the, it works in a rock, paper, scissor with the three primary suits. Mm -hmm. So the athletes will intimidate the misfits. So if they encounter each other, the athletes will beat the misfits. Every time. Misfits will bewilder the um, preps. The preps. And therefore beat the preps. And then the preps will outsmart the athletes. Right. So they, it, it runs So thematically it makes sense. Yeah. And then... The all of them, as we mentioned, will be, will be the good. generic. Right. Uh, but each card has a special ability. They have speeds as far as how much they move down the track. And your goal is to get through the semester. So each row on the board represents a semester. Right. And there's eight of them. And then each column represents a hallway. Right. So once you place the card, in essence, it, it will march down that hallway to until it reaches the end, unless another card affects it, which causes it to shift out of that lane. And it's flunking out. Well, no, that's Potentially just sh shifting out. out of the lane. It's only right. when you encounter your opponent that that... Right, but you can either shift out or flunk out, and that's how you yeah. get it out of the hallway. Uh, but if you ma manage to march all the way down to the eighth position, it's kind of like in chess, you would become promoted to a queen if you're a pawn. In this case, you graduate, and you get to right. become victory points for your score. You play to ten victory points, and the game's over. So on your turn, you're going to get action points that... Sh start in the game with five action points and it will increase based upon the number of students that your opponent graduates and the game is called credits which yeah you know, yeah so uh when you uh choose your cards you can hold back some of those points for future rounds you don't have to use them all so you can save them up for a future round uh you play your card and it has a cost on it at, at the top left that will tell you how many points it takes to play that card and there's, uh, in addition to the students, there's also event cards, and they have a calendar on them. And if you play the event, you can play that in between any of the different phases of the turn. Or even your opponent's turn. Uh, oh, you can? Yeah. Your opponent's. Okay. So you can play them actually between any, any two uh, phases on a turn. And it will trigger an effect that might cause, be able to save one of your people, because... Once you put them in a lane, if you yeah. didn't have those events They're or have, stuck. have one of the students that affected them, you could end up, like if I put in an athlete and my uh, Rob was playing after me, he could put in a uh, uh, prep in the same lane and they were eventually going to march until they hit each other and I'm going to lose every time. So if but you don't have those... actually happened the other way around. He annihilated <laughs> me. But I played first, so that was your own fault on that side. So. But if, if you have cards that you might change their suit, there's to that's what the tokens are for, is to change the suits, and right. that can save your person. But I didn't see a whole lot of that myself. I have one, I think, through. that we got. You kept getting all the events. I didn't have yeah, any events. I, 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 I had a lot of events. Yeah. What, and some of them were really cool. Yeah. Uh, 
So the events can flunk out one of your people. So if you have somebody in your way, you play the card and they flunk yeah. out and they're gone. Or they, you could do a whole row. Yeah. Uh, there was one, I had a, wiped out a whole column. Yeah, a whole very column. End. So it, it's kind of really neat and it really affects the game sometimes quite significantly. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a simple concept, but there's a lot of meat in the cards. There's a lot of tactics. It's so, a very tactical game. Yeah, you know, if you are a fan of chess type games, this might be for you. I mean, it's got... Uh, some elements of that in there, mm -hmm. which I can appreciate because we, we're a big fan of uh, War Chess, yeah. and we, I, you know, I love Nightmare Chess. It's one of my favorite game variants of chess. So this kind of has a chess-like feel, which I appreciate. Uh, the Rock, Paper, Scissors is a little basic for me as far as the combat goes, but it, you know, it works. It gets the job done. And it is luck-based, so you, know, you might have a better draw than your opponent, and that can make a big difference yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, take it for what it is. It's not... You know, mm -hmm. it was still fun. Yeah. I mean, and, and given the fact that there are variants that you can yeah. play, it might change up that too. I mean, you could, if you're drafting and creating your, building your deck during the game, you could I take could, yeah, some of that luck factor. You could be, potentially do that, yeah. It'd be interesting. Yeah. So as far as, you know, the score for how much gameplay and how much fun I had, I, I, I think I'm about a six on this too, I think. I think so. I mean, there's not, I don't think the replayability is real high, so I think that would kind of lower the score a little bit mm -hmm. uh, for me. Uh, you play it a couple times, it's going to get samey. And so I, I don't think that... Yeah. The, uh, I mean, it'll take away some of the fun of the cards, certainly, because sure, you've, you've seen them sure. and you've got the laughs off of them. And, so. and that's where the uh, the being able to modify with some expansions, I think, would help that. Yeah, yeah I lot. agree. I think you know, um, keeping it fresh and bringing more cards in is going to help. I, I do think it would be probably a bit better with more lanes. I think yeah, three lanes is really limiting. I think more lanes, like if you had five lanes, it might have been a little more flexibility, a little more... Uh, you know, especially the shove cards, because there's some cards that let you shove to the left or shove to the right. Right. I think those would have more impact if there were more lanes. Well, at least one more. So then that way, no matter where you place, you could potentially shove yeah. in one direction or the other. Because I played a card mistakenly. I just didn't wasn't thinking about it. I played a card right in the middle, and it either shoves to the... Uh, when something comes next to it, it either shoves to the left or the right. Well, if they're in the left and right, you can't shove them. So the card is useless in the middle lane. Um, so if there was an extra lane, it would uh, mitigate that. So yeah. that might, it would be interesting. Uh, you know, maybe that's not the point, though. Maybe he intentionally did that to help strategize even more. Well, it's not to make sure you play it. That it's way. useless for its ability. It's right. still got the icon. In yes, it, and let it beat certain cards. So if you're in a situation where somebody's getting ready to score, it, mm -hmm. it can still defend and beat them. Right. So. You know, all in all, I think as far as a first attempt of it, a game, I'm, I'm designer, impressed. I'm impressed. I, I'm impressed. I, I think this was a very good first. I, first I effort. think so I, too. I, and I could see where you could just make it better. Yeah. You know, you know, some additional printings. Hopefully, he uh, is able to do that, where he can improve the rule book and maybe improve some of the components. It doesn't. It won't take a lot yeah. to improve that. And I think it could be a really great. Um, but I mean, even in the in the way it is, it's still a fun game. It really and, is. It really you know, is. I wouldn't discourage someone from buying this. No, and not I at all. think it's it's what thirty dollars on Amazon. Bucks. It's not horrible, and you're supporting someone who's this is their first time out. So right, I, I, even better. I think it's a great thing. Uh, you know, so you know, I don't. It's while it's not the best first, you know, game ever. It's still a great first attempt, and I think that's amazing. So I've seen a lot worse. Yeah, uh, uh, kudos to. Um, too sharp for his first game. I, th I, I think he, you know, I think he did a great job. Yeah. So that's our assessment of uh, Grad Rush. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it and maybe give this guy some, you know, props yeah. and yeah. check it out. Uh, it's it is fun if you if like those kind of strategy games, like two player one on one mm -hmm. type strategy games. It's a, it's a fun light one. It's not heavy. It's quick through the table, quick to put away. Yeah, it didn't take us long to play through it. Yep. So. All right, well, until next time, we look forward to talking to you in the future. Hit that subscribe, make sure you follow along, hit the notification bell, all those things and bells and whistles you yeah. all know about every time. All right, 